Hi everyone, and welcome to this introduction to dynamic mode decomposition, which is a very, very cool and highly useful topic for the identification of dynamic systems and also studying their properties. Right, so our you know, system is as always x dot equals f of x, now very general, um, and we may have certain issues with this f of x that uh, make it more challenging to, to study this system. Right? So the first um, and, and most obvious problem could be that this is unknown. Right? So obviously we have a problem, maybe we get data, but we don't know the system. There may be another problem, not as as, as problematic as the one before, but for, for type, let's say, analyzing systems, it makes it ch uh, more challenging. Maybe it's a nonlinear system. Right, we have seen, um, and then we get to this point in a minute, that linear systems are very, very easy to study if we know the spectrum, right? So the eigenvalues and the associated eigenvectors. So nonlinear systems are harder to study. A third thing that may be problematic Let's say it even is a linear system, but it may be very high dimensional. Right, so this does not, does not seem to be a, a particular problem at the moment, but you can think of this as you know, a problem in terms of memory or computing times. So if you study very large uh, energy grids or gas networks, then you may have very, very high dimensional systems, and even then you may run into trouble. And so two questions that we would like to answer, so right, we're not very satisfied with this situation, and we would like to, to address this to um, maybe get some of the, the methods back that we are so uh, like so much in, in linear systems. And this is what the dynamic mode decomposition is all about, or short DMD, if you ever heard this abbreviation. So two questions basically that we want to address or that are of interest in most system analysis problems First of all, what are the dominant patterns in my dynamical system? Okay, so we have discussed this a bit already. Um, maybe the individual states x1, x2, x3 are not uncorrelated, but they form a certain large-scale pattern that is of interest. And so the question is, can we find these dominant patterns if we have a, a non-linear system? or maybe a, an unknown system even, and just have data. And so the second question that we want to address is the question of what is their dynamical behavior? So of these dominant patterns, if dominant patterns exist, what is their dynamic behavior? Okay, so how do they oscillate or decay or grow? Well, how do they change over time? And so if you recall, uh, a few videos ago, what we introduced was the singular value decomposition, right? We said we have data and we want to find a basis, a low rank basis, rank R is what we, what we chose, that contains the, contains the most uh, dominant patterns, the important features, and covers from a statistical perspective the, the largest part of the variance. Okay, so the singular value decomposition answers our question one. So this is good, right? We can use SVD to find these patterns, even if we do not know the, the system. And as long as we have data, we can do this. But here's the problem if we want to study question two. This becomes problematic if we do not have the equations, right? Or you can do, we, we talked about this briefly, the V matrix in the SVD, if we take a time series, um, contains some sort of temporal evolution of the modes, but it's very hard to make general statements about stability and long-term behavior about this, right? So you really have to look at the numbers. So this poses the question, and what we want to do, or what we know is, if this were a linear system, then, well, this would be jackpot, right? We have an, an A matrix, we can study the properties, eigenvalues, and, and say something about dynamic behavior and, and stability. So, if, and this is the big if, of course, f of x is simply 
a times x, so we have a linear system, then just look at the spectrum and we're happy. Problem now is that we do not always know the spectrum or it does, well, this, there exists no such thing as a spectrum if we have a nonlinear system. If it were linear though, what we can do is we can simply say, okay, our solution, and we have seen this a couple of times now, is x of t, which is the, the matrix of eigenvectors times this e to the lambda 1t, little e to the lambda nt. Again, this is the special case where all of them are uniquely defined, so we have no double eigenvalues, uh, p inverse times x0. Okay, so this is something we have seen a couple of times now. So the spectrum gives us all we need and we are quite happy about this. And so here's the idea, what if we do not have a linear system, or maybe we don't even know the system, let's just assume that there is a linear relation, okay? So this is the very basic idea of DMD, and it sounds very simple, um, but a lot of people have been working towards making this numerically efficient and really extracting these from large data sets and so on. So there's been a lot of research in recent years, but in res retrospective, the question is, appears to be very simple actually. So given time series data, x, right, this was our data matrix, so we had a snapshot at time one, a snapshot at time two, and so on until we had a snapshot at our time capital N. So this was our big data matrix. Um, N was the state dimension and capital N was the number of time steps. So given such a matrix, simply, and this is the, 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 the big assumption, simply assume the existence of a linear relation. And so this is obviously a very, very strong assumption. We just say, okay, we have a data set. We have no idea what created this data. And at least it's a dynamic system, sure, but we don't know whether it's a linear system, whether it's a nonlinear system, how strongly nonlinear this behavior actually is and so on. So let's get rid of all these ideas and let's just assume that there is a linear relation. So we say, okay, we don't know whether this A even exists, but let's just say, We assume that this is given, okay? And so one thing that we have to keep in mind, this is not an equal sign because we cannot guarantee this, right? So we say, okay, let's assume that there is an approximate linear relation. And this is really important because if we do have a linear system, then we can, you know, use, find this A from data. If it's not a linear system, this is obviously an approximation. And so what we do is we again can solve an optimization problem to find this best fit matrix. So even it, if it may be a nonlinear system, let's try to find a matrix that in the best possible way, so with minimal error, predicts the, the mapping from xk to xk plus one. So as before, let's just formulate this as an optimization problem. So we say this matrix A is the arc min. So just a second. So I'm minimizing over all possible matrices A tilde, and the argument that minimizes this, so the, the, the A that minimizes my loss function is what I get. And so this is the minimizer over my trajectory. So this I to n minus one, x k plus one minus A tilde times x k. So what you see, this is very, very familiar. This is a least squares type error, right? We have an input xk. We have a mapping that maps this input to an output xk plus one. 
The difference now is what we have seen so far was a mapping from a vector to a scalar. So that the, 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 the matrix or the, the parameter set that we are trying to learn was just a weight parameter W. So, right, so this was our W earlier, which was a Q valued vector, right, depending on how many features we had. And so, but this is no longer the true case. Now we're trying to find a matrix. So it's sort of a, a multivariate problem of the least squares version that we have seen. But other than that, it looks actually quite related, right? So it seems to be solvable very well. We have a, a quadratic loss function. This is convex, so there should be a unique minimizer and should be easily findable by using ordinary least squares. And so this is actually what you can do, right? What we will do is we just say, let's define our data matrix Z um, as X1, X2, and so on, until X n minus one, right? And then let's define a matrix Z dash, which is basically the same matrix, except that we shift at every point in time uh, one time step ahead. So it goes from X1, uh, sorry, X2, X3, until X n, okay? So what you see is I have created out of my data set two matrices that are you know, I'm mapping from Z to Z hat, uh, Z dash, excuse me, always one times step X1 goes to X2, X2 goes to X3, until Xn minus one going to Xn. And so if you look at this, then we see directly that the matrix A, if this were a true relationship, would map xk to xk plus one, one or every column of z to the column of z hat, uh, z dash, excuse me. So what I can say is simply um, the matrix z dash is, and again, let's use the approximate sign because obviously it cannot be satisfied exactly, um, a times the z matrix, okay? So column wise, x1, a times the first column gives me the first column of z dash, which is x2 and so on. So it's really a mapping and this again is an approximate sign. E only if this is really created by a linear system can we identify this. If not, then this loss function will not be zero, right? We cannot have an exact mapping from xk to xk plus one in every time step using a linear system if the underlying relation is nonlinear. But this is now our problem and what you can do is um, very, very related to the regression problem for um, for scalar outputs, we can use the, solve this using the pseudo inverse, right? So we have not discussed the details, but please believe me that it's in a very related way we can do this. So what we get is a, and again, no, it's not, it's still an approximate solution, but this is the minimizer of this problem. So what we get is z dash multiplied from the right hand side with the pseudo inverse of the z matrix, right? So you multiply from the right with z pseudo inverse, so this one goes to the left. And so this matrix solves this problem, okay? And so we've seen the DMD algorithm is actually very, very simple, but if we take data, then we can calculate this matrix using a simple regression problem, right? Calculate the pseudo inverse in a closed form and we're done. What remains to be studied, of course, is how much information is contained in such a matrix A if the system is truly and utterly nonlinear. Right? This has to be determined. Right? So there's this approximate sign is really crucial, but let's hope that we can get some information out of the system matrix, even though the system matrix may not exist for the true system. Right? And then we will see, even if we have very high dimensional systems, this may be of interest because maybe we want to try not to find the full A matrix, which is very large, but maybe we are only interested in the leading components of my, my eigenvector matrix corresponding to the most important eigenvalues. And this will be the topic of the follow-up video where we will discuss an efficient implementation and in particular avoiding computing this large matrix if it's very large and instead directly going to the spectrum and thus learning something about our system from data. Thank you.